Hi, my name is Jeffrey Marks. I'm a psychic medium, paranormal investigator, uh, author, and radio show host. And I have a passion for the exploration of consciousness. And one of the things that comes with consciousness is uh, the notion of reincarnation. A lot of people oftentimes ask, have I been here before? Have I lived other lives? And for me in the work that I've done, uh, being a medium, the question I would ask is, has there ever been a time that you've not been alive? Uh, you've been alive from all time, all time since the beginning of the Big Bang you've been here. The question you need to ask is, have I been in a physical body the whole time? And I think the answer to that is pretty simple. No, not always, but there have been uh, actual scientific studies to show that people do appear to come back and have had previous lives. There are, believe it or not, telltale signs in a person's life that can suggest what a previous personality could have been, and we can talk about that too. The study of reincarnation actually got started uh, back at the University of Virginia, although I can't remember the time frame. I actually think it was either the 60s or the 70s. It may have been sooner, with uh, Ian Stevenson. And he started taking his cue from children. He started hearing stories of children over in India, you know, because in India it, it's part of their religious philosophy that reincarnation exists. He would get stories of these, these kids who were able to tell uh, their parents, what village they had in, that they lived in in a previous life. They could describe the parents. Uh, and then they started to notice that in some cases the children even had birthmarks on their body that would correspond in some cases to uh, wounds or injuries that a previous personality had in that other life. And so Dr. Stevenson started going over to India and researching these cases. And he uh, ended up uncovering uh, over 2,500 what he felt were very legitimate uh, research cases of reincarnation uh, involving both children and adults. And since he started uh, doing a lot of this back in the 70s, uh, he went back in the, in the 90s and towards the end of his life bringing other investigators with him to follow up with some of these kids that he had investigated earlier on. So what the research uncovered uh, was that uh, the children had not only memories of uh, where, they came, where their previous personality existed, like the name of a town that they existed in, they also could recall uh, family member, previous family member's name of the previous personality. And in some cases, the children even displayed birthmarks which corresponded to wounds that the previous personality uh, incurred, and in some cases, the, even the death blow that killed the previous personality resulted in a birthmark in the child. Now, what uh, Dr. Stevenson did since he started this research back in the 70s, he flew back and visited some of these, these children back in the 90s and, and in the early part of, of the new millennium, I believe, to follow up to see how they had grown uh, knowing that they had done the research and had followed up on the past life incarnation information. What was fascinating is that some of those children, since having gone through the investigation, you know, they had actually met up with the remaining family members of the previous personality. They were actually, in some cases, still living or at least carrying on the relationship with those family members. So they basically had two families. They had the family that they were born to in this life that they were connected with. But because they had done the reincarnational research, they also had the family of the previous personality and they were still interacting. And it was, it was a wonderful dynamic to see. Now what they also discovered though, was that even though they had this previous personality the current personality still continued to move forward with this life and to go on and do different things and still become, you know, their own individual. They didn't remain locked into the past with, and live them, their lives in this past personality. It's still, they still grew, they still became their own individual. And so there's actually been quite a, quite a bit of research on reincarnation done scientifically through universities and, and uh, psychology departments. 
And uh, like I said, Ian Stevenson started it by actually going to the people that had the children that had the reincarnational memories and experiences. But that hasn't been the only way it's been studied. It has also been studied through hypnosis, which can be controversial. Uh, Brian Weiss is the most well-known uh, person to have done this. I think he's the one that really pioneered past life uh, regression. But, you know, those have yielded excellent results, too, because data points will come up in, in a regression, you know, name, uh, birthplace, conditions, lifestyle. And they've followed up on those and have had some great success as well. So there has been, through hypnosis, uh, highly suggestible data to say that uh, a person has come forward through time uh, from another incarnation. Another person who's done some really fascinating and kind of uh, different way of handling it is uh, a gentleman, uh, I got his book here, by the name of Walter Simku. And he, the reason he got started into it is because he had memories uh, of a past life and he went and he started digging them up. Now what he did, which is really different from everybody else, is he went and saw... Um, a famous psychic, Kevin Ryerson, who uh, is Shirley MacLaine's uh, psychic. And Kevin channels uh, an entity that uh, purportedly claims to be able to tell somebody about their past lives or be able to tell at least Walter who somebody was in a current incarnation. So he started picking out celebrities and going to Kevin and saying, okay, I have this celebrity here. Can you tell me who they were in a past life? And he would get a name and then he would start following up on the name that Kevin gave him and discovered astonishingly that if he could find photographs of the previous personality and compare them with the current personality, you could actually see incredibly a lot of the same features. You could actually get into incredibly the type of personality likes and dislikes of the previous incarnation actually me meshing up with the current personality. So there are ways of uh, determining and potentially finding your own past life, you know, and here we get into the typical what have your phobias been and, and that sort of thing. Uh, yes, they can point to a previous past life, but I think the stuff that really points to it or is the stuff that is kind of like so much in your face. You know, for me, uh, you can look around me and you can see a whole bunch of, of ancient Egypt around me. And that's because I was there at some point. I mean, I, I recall having memories uh, when I was a little boy of the terrain of Egypt. I mean, I remember when I was three years old and my grandparents were, were talking about the Great Pyramid. And at three years old, I had, had no idea. I should have had no idea what that was. I had never seen any photographs or anything like that. But when they started talking about it, in my head, I saw the plateau. Uh, I saw the Great Pyramid uh, with the casing stone still on it. You know, what we see today is not the way it used to look. And, and I could have told you back then at three years old that there were other pyramids on that plateau. I mean, the other thing that was, that can really bring out the information of a previous incarnation, like I said, is are the phobias. But to me, they would need to be really, really strong. I mean, it's one thing to have, you know, I'm a little nervous, I'm a little scared. It's another to be going, oh my gosh, what the freak is going to happen to me? That's, now that points to something that's, that's primal, that's really down in there in your consciousness. And for me, <laughs> that happened every 4th of July <laughs> when my parents took us out to the fireworks. I hid under the blanket and screamed the entire time uh, because I was I was horrified I was going to get blown up I was going I was going to I was going to be caught in some kind of big explosion uh, because I had a previous incarnation in the Pacific in World War II. Uh, how do I know this? Well, a couple different ways is one is because of the phobia itself, um, but because there are other circumstances that I've had in my life where the synchronicities all point to that uh, incarnation. The other reason, and this kind of goes with how Walter came across his information, is I had a psychic tell me just completely out of the blue. I mean, I didn't, she wasn't giving me a reading. 
uh, we just happened to be in the room at the same time and she looked at me and she says, you know, you were, you were blown up in World War II. You know, it was just, there it was. It was, it was just kind of like, yes, I was, I was. And, and, and she gave me the age that I was blown up, which corresponded a lot to when I was growing up. I always said, you know, I think I'm gonna be dead before I'm 20, 20 or 23. Um, and that was because that incarnation, that is when I passed, or when he passed, was at that age. So you, you can find things in your, your life that can harken back or at least imply a previous personality. What are the benefits of, of reincarnation? What can we learn from it? Uh, you know, aside from uncovering where our phobias might come from. Well, we can also learn somewhat of how things are in our, our lives in terms of a social structure. It was a girl who believed she was a reincarnated Japanese World War II soldier. So one of the things that the, the young girl talked about was hating how spicy the food was, which was totally apropos because the Japanese hated the food because it was so spicy. The other thing too was uh, she was a, a little girl, but the previous life was a Japanese male. She grew up being a lesbian. So this could actually help explain uh, why we have you know, bisexual behavior, why we have homosexual behavior. It's not that it is uh, incorrect or wrong. It could be simply because that's the predominant energy. That's something that's being brought over from previous life. The other great amazing find that the, the scientists have uncovered that have studied the children and the adults and everything that, and that have chronicled what their past lives have been, they've discovered that religion, ultimately in, in the grand scheme of things, organized religion, really doesn't play that big a role. You can be uh, a Muslim in a previous life and be a Catholic in another life and there is no problem with that. There's absolutely no problem with that. I, I think one of the greatest things that reincarnation can tell us is that there is no one true religion, uh, that all religions uh, are acceptable and all religions can play a role in the development of consciousness and the development of a soul. So uh, it, it ultimately is just another pathway and another way of, of marching through time. And that's, I think that's the other big wonderful takeaway if we can scientifically accept the notion of reincarnation, it may help us absolve ourselves of a lot of, of wars and, and distrust and, and feuding because once you come to the concept that you go on, that life goes on, that there is no such thing as death, it puts you in a framework of mind where it forces you to start thinking differently about how to interact with society, your fellow man and the planet because if you don't like something you can't just wipe it out. You can't just get rid of it because that, that's nonsense. That's, that's not happening. It's not going to happen. It forces you to start looking at things in a, in a more loving manner, in a more compassionate manner, because everything continues on. Everything goes forward, and, and we need to, to be aware of the sovereignty of the consciousness and the soul and everything else that continues to progress. Then we get into the real heavy stuff around reincarnation, and that is... Is it really linear? Because, you know, in science, in particularly quantum physics, we know there is no such thing as the past or the future. It's really all one big now. It's all spread out like this. And so if everything's all spread out, we have to ask ourselves, well, how does reincarnation fit into all this? Because if that's the case, then a previous me all these previous me's are really coexisting simultaneously, which is honestly the case. You know, when you get into the whole notion of time being an illusion, that's really what it ends up saying. And, and that's hard to wrap your mind around. You're going, well, how can I, how can I conceptualize this? And, uh, you know, there's a couple ways of doing it. And I think the one that works for most people is just imagine planet Earth 
out in space. Imagine you're an astronaut and you're looking down at planet Earth. Well, right now on planet Earth, there's like 42 different time zones. So there's time split up right there. But for that astronaut out in space, it's all simultaneous. It's all going on right there, right now. It's not in 42 different zones. It's all right now. It's only down here on Earth, depending on where you are geographically and what you've been told, that's where you're going to perceive you exist. So what does this mean in terms of owning a past life? I could sit here and say, I got blown up in World War II. Is that really the case? Is that really me? Well, actually, in a sense, yes, but also in a sense, no. What am I talking about? Uh, I'm talking about not necessarily a reincarnational self. I, I have since flopped that term reincarnation and have turned it into the term simultaneous. It's a simultaneous self. How does all that come together? Basically, all these simultaneous selves roll up into this notion called an oversoul. And that's a real heavy, deep concept to, to grasp. But basically, an oversoul is more or less a huge energy template. It's a huge energy entity, if you want to call it, whose sole purpose, or at least part of its purpose, is to go and express itself in as many ways as possible. And as it is going out and expressing itself in as many ways as possible, it ends up poking into these different realms of time. Lives in the past, lives in what we would consider our, our potential future. Why? Well, because each time actually has incredible value in terms of the nature of what one can experience and what one can express. Because when we go backwards, just from a, a reference framework, if we go backwards, we can see that our time periods all have their own value system. They're different than they are today. Heck, we can see that within the last 30, 40 years. You know, with our advancement of technology, our value system has changed. With different value systems also comes different belief systems, also becomes different ways of learning and different ways of how we express ourselves and engage with all that is. And so the simultaneous selves allow for all possible experiences for that oversoul. So I, me as Jeffrey, am a finger on the hand of the oversoul. Then there is this previous personality in World War II, also a finger on the hand of the same oversoul, and then any other life backwards and forwards. It's all a hand, but when you start putting in the filter of time, that only makes it look one right after the other. But once you get out of the field of time, you've got your whole hand here. So that's another way of, of trying to explain it. Reincarnation is really the great, wonderful, magnificent, whole self that you are expressing itself in this vast framework of time and space. I think we know intuitively that we're much greater than, than what we are looking at in the mirror. And this kind of speaks to that. Uh, and, and the thing, too, is because it's from an oversoul, all these personalities will have similar interests, similar events, because the other thing that the oversoul is doing is it's balancing out energy through its expression. And that's why, in some cases, you will have one personality commit suicide while another personality ends up going through the same type of events which led to this one committing suicide to where this one actually doesn't because back in the bringing up together with the oversoul it has had both experiences it's balanced the energy it's just parceled it out through these existences which when you filter in the fabric of time appears to be one after another. But once we 
get rid of that filter, it's all happening at once. Ultimately, that's, that's kind of what it, what it turns out being. Uh, and, we, and we know this from science. You know, time is, is just a focus of consciousness. In fact, there's, a, there's a one, one little way that you can experience this yourself uh, on the illusion of time. And that is, is, is find a way to just more or less distract yourself. And I'm sure you've had this happen. Everybody has this happen. Just distract yourself by doing something, you know, whatever it is to just get your mind out of the now moment. And then look at your watch. And I swear, there are times when you do this where you, where you look at your watch and that little second hand that should be ticking like this actually kind of holds there, you know, longer than a second. And then you see it click and you, and you say to yourself, now wait a minute, I know that was holding on there longer than a second. How, how did that happen? Well, that's because your consciousness actually, for that split little moment there, was in that eternal space. It just spread it all out. It took, a, it took that little brief moment for it to click back in. We do it all the time with, con with consciousness. You know, it's that old sort of saying of, boy, today went by really fast, or it went by really slow. So we have this view in our consciousness of time actually not being linear, but rather fluid. Of course, Einstein got into it too. I mean, he was the one that basically said, it's not 60 seconds equals a minute. It's all relative to the observer. And he did a couple thought experiments to demonstrate that. So there's actually a lot of science behind uh, the reality of time being fluid not being linear, that it is, is, you know, for lack of a better term, simultaneous. Uh, when it comes to past lives and uncovering past lives, a lot of people use reincarnation as a scapegoat, you know, for the problems and stuff that they're having in their current life. It's kind of like, oh, that's because this happened to me back here. I got to deal with all of this karma. And you know what? That's, that's nonsense. Uh, could you imagine the, the burden you would have to bear if you were making up for all of these past lives back here? Let's say you only knew about four of them, but maybe had 30, but you only really knew about four of them. And all you did was focus on the negatives that occurred in that life and throwing that on your current incarnation going, oh, I got to make up for these four back here if we get all the badness. That's, you can't do, that's horrible. That's not what you're here to do. Um, you're balancing energy all the time. You have, the thing is, is you have, it's all simultaneous. You have all of these lives going on. It's, all, it's balancing out, it's working out. And I'm sorry, but not every life is pure 100% bad and negative. There's good points all the time. In every life, there's good points. The thing about time being simultaneous also points to your present point of power being the now moment. They have done scientific experiments and tests to show that intention in the now moment not only carries forward into the future, it can actually go backward and affect the past. So this whole idea of being tormented by your karma is false. You don't have to accept that because you are a sovereign individual spirit and soul. You can acknowledge past events as being negative if you want, um, but there's also this wonderful spiritual concept called forgiveness. And if you can forgive yourself, whether it's a past life or not, you, meet, you, you pretty much absolve yourself of the karma right then and there. It's, it's what you want to hold on to into your consciousness. It's what you want to gravitate towards. To wrap this up, what does this all mean? Especially when it comes to all time being simultaneous and karma and all that. Uh, basically what it means is that you were born perfect. You weren't born with any flaws, uh, but you were born with a history, if you want to call it a history. Because when we enter into this dimension, we accept into our consciousness the filter of time. So we accept that our expression is going to be this point of view of one thing after another, even though we have science to back up that it's really not that way. But this is how we have chosen to experience this reality. Um, so the history that you're coming in with will be 
those emotional events and, and things that you, or for lack of a better term, you have buried in your consciousness from these previous times that are really just going on simultaneously. What makes you perfect is your ability to choose in your consciousness what to accept and what not to accept. Uh, you also have the right to determine where the course of your life goes because as we know from the studies that were done through Ian Stevenson's work even though these children still met up with their previous families that they had an incarnation with they still went forward in their current life and were doing things other than what the other previous personality did. So you are not confined to what previous personalities did or did not do. Uh, you are not shackled like a prisoner to past lives. You are free to move forward. You are free to express. Uh, but like anything, you carry a history. Here's a, here's a little, th little brain teaser to, to get you to think. Once we pass away, once we pass out of this realm, and we enter the no time zone, wouldn't it be fun to converse with a previous you? Because essentially, they would still be there. They are there. They were their own unique sovereign entity back here in the 1500s, which you could claim was you. But when you step out of time, where do they go? And where do you go? As a medium, I can connect with a person's, you know, mother, father from this life. That goes to show to me that that life continues on. Um, that they don't disappear, it doesn't disintegrate. So what about the other lives that that person had? Where are those lives? Actually, they are there too. And so when you reach the other side, it might be kind of fun to find who you are and go up and have a conversation with yourself. But if you think that you had problems and phobias in this life that were caused by another life, you might find perhaps that interaction uh, a little bit too disheartening because you know how overcritical we can be with ourselves. This, this is uh, when we get into the concept of the Akashic Records. It takes a lot of that pain away if you can just read about it as data points. But I guess really ultimately the point I want to make is uh, you're not bound or restricted by any incarnation that you have lived. That you are grand in your totality in the now moment no matter where or when you exist.